guys, it's Kevin again, and um, this is going to be my review for the pilot episode of Sam and Cat. I just got to give it applause right now. I'm going to do it. Um, I just need to. I, I need to give this show applause. Because... I don't think Nick Lane was fair to the show or Dan Schneider. Because, as we know, Dan Schneider... Sorry, this DVD's becoming... Yeah, I'm going to... Okay. As we know, Dan Schneider really wanted this show to premiere after the Kids' Choice Awards, but they decided to air Monsters vs. Aliens. I did a whole rant about that. And it's become one of my most popular videos, and a lot of people really loved my rant on it. So then I read that they were going to wait till the fall. But then, I think it was sometime in May that they decided they were going to premiere it in June, and I thought that was perfect because it is summertime, and that's a perfect time to premiere the show. i got to say, this show is amazing. <laughs> now, of course... I loved it because it had my two favorite characters from my two favorite from two my from my two favorite Nick shows. Sam was my favorite from iCarly and Kat was always my favorite from Victorious. And it's great to see them on TV again. So let's just get started. The episode starts out. Actually I saw the first five minutes on iTunes because iTunes put out a six minute trailer and it had the very first the first five minutes of the show. Um and um so yeah, that that five minute trailer ended up being the first five minutes of the show. So it starts off when we see Sam on a motorcycle, because as we know, at the end of iCarly, and I think this was very cleverly done, we see Sam on a motorcycle going off to somewhere, and we don't know where she's going. I thought that was very cleverly done how they did that, and that was perfect how they did that, because it really foreshadowed this show. And so we see her in L.A., and then we see um, Kat. And, um, well, first Sam gets a burrito, and um, then she sees Kat, and Kat, um... She's on a bicycle, and she's with these kids. Because I'm back oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit that. But Cat is, um, she has these two kids who are looking for a cat. And um, Cat says, oh, my name is Cat. So she decides to look for the cat, and she finds the cat, but then she loses her gum, and her gum falls out of her mouth. So then she looks for the gum. But then a garbage truck comes, and the garbage truck throws the can into the garbage truck that Cat is in, and Sam saves her, and um, so yeah, that's what pretty much happened there. And I love the part where uh, Cat's, where Sam's like, why is that random redhead girl, why is that random redhead chick in a trash can? And why is there a battery in my burrito? And so then when she rescues Cat, Cat faints, and she, and Sam says, how, okay, you're buying me a new burrito now. So then um, we see the awesome theme song, Sam and Cat, which I love because it is very, very different from iCarly or Victorious. iCarly and Victorious had these really catchy theme songs with Son Son by the main lead of the show. This song is not sung by Ariana Grande or Danette McCurdy. They both can sing, but they didn't sing the theme song to this. This theme song is sung by Backhouse Mike, who does most of the songs for iCarly and Victorious and you know, all of Dan Schneider shows. And I think that's great because this song is great and it, it very, it is very much sounds like an old sitcom type of show and that's really what they want it to be and I was very happy about that. So then we see um, Sam cleaning Cat off with a leaf blower. And um, so then Sam kind of doesn't have anywhere to live so Cat uh, takes her over to her Nona's house where um, she takes Sam to take a bath and then so they see these um, this foreigner who is helping out this foreigner and they say how well we're the foreigner's children and then they get to Kat's Nona's house and um, there we see that um, Kat, that Sam's in this very big robe and she's like can I please wear a robe that doesn't make me look like a freaky rainbowish clown and I thought that was really funny it was something like that but I thought that was really funny when she said that um, I thought that was great. So definitely that gets applause. That was great. Right there. That, was, that was just fantastic. And so from there, um, after she's in out of the um after she's out of the robe, um 
we see this kid, Dice. And Dice is a very interesting kid, and I think he's going to be probably one of the funniest kids on this show. He's probably going to be one of my favorites on the show. I already love his character already. This is a kid who sells everything, pretty much. And we see him, he sells random hair. And um, at first they both think that's for you, but then he says celebrity hair, and Kat takes the Justin Bieber hair, which you guys know how much I hate Justin Bieber, but that was funny, because that this is Kat. Kat doesn't think anything is bad. Kat just loves everything and doesn't think of anything as bad. So that's Kat for you, and she takes the hair and she smells it, and I thought that was great. And so then he leaves, and we see... Um, then we see... Um, her Nona, and um, Sam's sleeping on the couch, and her Nona um, takes the couch, folds it up, and puts, and puts, and leaves Sam the couch. It's like a f um, fold-up couch, so let's say this was a couch. This whole thing be folded up, and then Sam cut into the couch, and then the lights were off, so then Kat sees her, and Kat goes in to comfort her, but her Nona does the same thing to Kat, so I thought that was really funny. But in this conversation that they're having, Kat kind of asks Sam, um, where, where do you have to be? And Sam says how she doesn't really have to be anywhere. And we see how, um, after this, we see how Kat is in school, but Sam is not. So wait a minute. This doesn't make very much sense here, because Sam did not graduate in iCarly. They didn't give a proper graduation in iCarly. They continued with school. Kat he is still in school, so why is Sam not in school? Is Sam ditching school? Does she not have anywhere to go? You know, I think Sam is left, maybe left school. I don't know. What do you think? Why do you think Sam was not in school when Kat came home? Because when Kat came home, Sam asked her how was school, and Kat and Sam was not in school. So I thought that was kind of strange. And so then we see how um, her Nona tells Kat's Nona tells her how. They want to send her to um, Elderly Acres, and Sam checks her Nona into Elderly Acres, and Kat is not happy about this. So then they see two kids, Max and Chloe, and a baby. And um, so she says how their Nona was supposed to be babysitting them, so Kat decides that they should babysit Max and Chloe. And so Sam sticks the baby in a thorn bush, um, not a thorn bush, but a bush, and she leaves the baby there, and then Kat says, you left the baby in the bush. And then she takes the baby out of the bush, and then when they get to, elder, then when we come back from commercials, we come back to Elderly Acres. There, and we see there that her um, Kat's Nona is having the time of her life, pretty much, um, in this Elderly Acres. She's having a great time. And this actress, you know, I don't know if we'll see her again, but it was really fun. She just seems like a really fun character. And it, it's cool to have an elderly character on the show that's not completely dumb or stupid. This is actually a character who, you know, she really is just a lot of fun. And she's not like someone who's, you know, like on iCarly and Victorious. Not so much Victorious, but especially iCarly. All the adults were dumb on the show except for Principal Franklin. And there are barely any adults on the show except for Vernona. So I like that we have someone who's not completely dumb. So I do like that. Um, it does it does make me wonder though that how is Kat related to her? Because her known is not dumb at all. Um, but then um, when Sam is watching Max and Chloe, they're like, what are we supposed to do that's fun? So she takes Max and Chloe on this um little uh I don't know, it was like a scooter or something, and she sends them off, and they end up at Inside Out Burger, and um they end up uh, knocking over the manager, and so then when um well, after, but while this is happening, Kat is still talking to her grandmother, and we, to her Nona, and her Nona tells her how she wants to stay there, so Kat lets her stay there. And I think it's great that Kat lets her stay there, and because, it, you know, Kat is able, should be able to live on her own. She's 18, she can live on her own. Um, so I'm glad that um, her Nona, that she let her Nona, you know, live at Elderly Acres. I think Kat's supposed to be 18. Is she 17 or 18? What do you guys think? I don't know. Um, but then what happens is that we see that they go back to Inside Out Burger. Well, then they go to Dice, and they ask Dice, where's Max and Chloe? And he says how they thought that he saw them at Inside Out Burger. And um, 
They try to help out this ma the, ma the manager, and they give him C-3PO, as Kat said it, and then um, Sam, and then Sam says, don't you mean CPR? And Kat says, let's try that first. And that was really funny. And, um, so then they end up reviving the man, giving him CPR. And, um, after that, we see how, uh, Kat says how, well, they get paid. And the mother comes back and the mother pays them. And, uh, Max and Chloe say how Sam and Kat were the best babysitters they've ever had. So once they leave, Kat kind of tell, um, Sam is counting up money. And she gives all the money to Kat, which I thought that was just great. That was fantastic. Sam really is becoming, is very mature in this show. And I really like that she did that for Kat. She gave all the money to her. And she's about to leave. And um, Kat says, how, where do you have to go? And Sam says, how, she doesn't really have anywhere to be. So Sam decides that she is going to stick around with Kat. And um, it's great that, that they did that. And I really love the scene where Kat's like, we're kind of like the odd fin odd couple, you know, um, um, plot thicken with, um, um, comical plots, and I thought that was funny, and how she said, how, um, she said, what was, what was it that Kat said they really liked? Oh my gosh. Oh, we'll probably have more adventures coming up soon. I thought that was really funny, as she kind of broke the fourth wall there, that was great. And so, um, then after that, when they hug, um, because, you know, well, we can see how Sam does not like Kat really hugging her, but then Sam does like Kat hug her, and, um, then they're on the, tr um, the, mor her, uh, Sam's motorcycle going on their way to Inside Out Burger, and, um, Kat is, um, Kat's touching the motorcycle, and Sam's like, don't touch my motorcycle, and then she's um, doing something else for a moment, and she's like, don't do that. And then she bonks Sam's um, helmet on, her, on the head, and she says, don't bonk the helmet. And that's how it ended, and I gotta say, it's great. Honestly, it is going to be one of the best shows, one of the best things Nickelodeon has decided to do, because they have never done a spinoff. Except for Keenan and Kyle and the Amanda show, but those don't really count, because they weren't actual characters. These are characters we know and love. And you were probably wondering... Is Sam and Kat the same as iCarly and Victorious? No, but everything you love about Sam, like loving meat, um, burritos, and there's a scene where when they revive the manager, he says, you have, um, you can eat free cheeseburgers for the rest of your life here. And Sam was like ecstatic about that. And then with Kat, you still have all the great catisms like KK, um, she still says that, and it's great that they have that, and you know, Sam is still very tough. And Kat is still very carefree and happy all the time and giddy. So they still have all the traits of Sam and Kat. And I think that is great. Honestly, Sam and Kat is one of the best things Nickelodeon's ever done. I'm so glad that it's finally premiered. It's done. The next episode is going to come up and I can't wait for it. It's going to be so, so good. And I'm not set the Victoria's cancel now because I think they're probably going to tell us stuff. But why is Sam not in school? That really appalls me because she did not graduate. Maybe it's because she's in L.A. and she's trying to find a place to live that she kind of just, maybe she dropped out of school. Maybe that'll be revisited in another episode. Probably won't, but I mean, no, it's not really like a major thing. But I would like to know why isn't Sam in school? Because, I mean, we never saw her graduate in the show. So why is she not in school? What do you guys think? So, um, yeah, so I really, really love the show. I highly recommend, if you love iCarly and Victorious, check out Sam and Cat. It is definitely worth it. Um, so that's it for my review of Sam and Cat. Let me know what you guys thought of the first episode. Do you love it? I think it's very different from iCarly and Victorious. It has that kind of odd couple, um, you know, thing. Did you like, uh, the theme song? The theme song, I think, is great. Um, why is Sam not in school? Why do you guys think that? And, um, what else did you like? Who's your favorite new character out of all the ones we saw? Nona, Dice, and Max and Chloe. Those are your choices. Who was your favorite out of those three, out of those four? Um, my personal favorite, I think, was Nona. I think Nona is a really great character. I don't think we're going to see her again, though. But Dice was great, too. I really loved Dice. And Max and Chloe were perfect for being babysit by. I'm sure we're going to see them again. Um, so, 
that's it for uh, my review of Salmon Cat. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next video. Okay, bye.